Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be replacing the leather on the dashboard right here. We're gonna go step by step on how to remove this dashboard completely, which includes removing every single thing you see here. We're gonna remove that dash and get this sent out to get reupholstered. So as you can see here, this leather has seen some better days. Uh, what happened here is the car was actually left unused for about eight months, left baking in the sun and the leather peeled back all right here. So we got some leather peeling back here, some more over on the driver's side over there. We're gonna go ahead and start removing the dash. The first thing we're gonna need to do is remove the center console here, be able to pull this back, which will gain access to certain screws underneath. So starting at the rear center console here, we're gonna go ahead and open the flaps here, have this open, and we're gonna just grab firmly from here and pull back. That'll undo the clips. Now you have one connector here to undo. You're gonna pinch the top and the bottom at the same time, and I'll release it. So here you can see the one clip, you gotta push here and also here at the same time, and then release that clip. We have one connector right here. We're gonna grab this and undo this connector. And then further down inside, you're gonna see the two connectors for the cigarette lighters. Go ahead and just undo those. They're not on by clips, so you just work them out. And then on the inside, you have one more connector. This one works by pushing down in the center here, which will release the gray portion. You slide it on down, and then that just comes off. All right, so now we could just pull this away, set this to the side and continue on on the inside. Next, we're removing the storage bin. It's held on by two T20 screws. Next, we have two 10 millimeter nuts. We're just gonna undo them here. One here, just like this. Next, we're going to remove the felt material here. This is a whole storage bin. We're gonna remove the cover for the 12 volt connector. You're gonna grip it from here and lift straight on up. That'll release all the locking tabs. So you have the connector for the light here. Go ahead and undo that one. And on the back side here, you're going to see the connector for the USB. There's a little tab right here. And the way you remove this is you get like a small little flathead. You want to push in on it just like this. And then with the other hand, you can pull it on out. Just like that. Now we're going to lift up the rest. You're gonna see another connector off to the side. Now I'm gonna turn this around just so I can show you guys easier. There's going to be two connectors here. This is for the wireless charging pad. Starting with the connector on the right side, you push in on this tab he here, and that'll release it. There's no locking tabs on this. You just grab the connector and pull it down. Now at this point, the only thing holding it on are the power and ground ca cables here for the 12 volt cigarette lighter. You don't want to touch anything here. You actually want to go down further inside. And here's the connector. And you're going to grab the top and the bottom, undo the latches and pull away. All right, so now we're not quite ready to pull this cable out because the harness this side is attached to the body harness, but the side attached to the storage bin is still attached to the car. So the way we undo that, you see the small little plastic that's sticking out right there? You're gonna wanna grab that and push down on it. That's gonna undo the locking tab and then you can slide it and that'll release it. So this right here in the middle, that's the locking tab right there. You need to push that down that'll unlock it and then you can slide it out. 
All right, so now moving forward onto the center console here, we're gonna look at the uh, front portion over here. If you have this little bin, go ahead and just remove this. And then there's going to be a little rubber mat right here. You're gonna wanna undo this mat. Just get under here and pull it up apart. Sounds a bit sticky. And then we'll set this to the side. Now what we're looking for are these two locking tabs. You have one right here and one right here. And what we got to do is we got to lift up both of them at the same time. So right there, that's unlocked. And then over here, you unlock that. You're going to grab the whole thing and just slide it forward. Just like that. Now that's going to unlock it. And we can pull this on out. Now you're going to see the connector right here. Same one as the one for the storage bin. Pinch the sides and pull them down. There's some seems to be about a lot of coffee stains here. So you actually do see a quite a bit of a corrosion right here. We're going to get these cleaned up, probably needing to replace all of this because this is badly corroded. And then on the other side, you're going to find a small two pin connector here. I'm just going to grab that and undo it. And then the last connector is going to be way behind there. It's going to be similar to the USB one that we undid in the center console bin. Let me see if I can get the camera in there. Okay, so here it is behind the store, the storage bin. So here's the locking tab right up there. So I'm gonna have to block the screen, but we're gonna push down on it. Okay. And now we can go ahead and release all this and let get this out of the way. So down underneath that storage bin, you're gonna see two T30 screws. Underneath the kick panel on the driver's side, we're going to undo the wing clips here. That way we can drop this. And right here, we'll undo this clip over here. Connector for the light. The connector for the emergency loudspeaker. And we're going to go ahead and get a panel popper for those clips. So here's one. Next, we got a T20 right here. We're going to remove. So same as the driver's side, we have two clips. Undo the clip here. This drops. I can undo the light. And this side over here has two T20s. We'll undo this one. I went a little further up, right here. Right under this area, there's going to be a small plastic trim. We're going to undo that. Bring this on down. So right in here, you're gonna have a T20 hidden right in there. Same thing on the other side. We're gonna undo those and then pull the center console back. Now from the back, we're gonna lift up and slide back. So now what's left to do, we're gonna go ahead and remove the panel here, remove the kick panel down there, move up along right here and remove the A-pillar trim. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So we got a T20 here. Now this one over here is a plastic T20, but it is a bit destroyed. Let's see if they'll come out pretty easy. Now 
on the back side of the hood latch release. There's one screw. Now underneath on this side there's a little access door. You slide that open. Which will allow you to release this. Just like that. So here's that little door. It's essentially a lock. So I'll just slide that back in so we don't lose it. Now uh, this just held on by a few clips. Slide that on out. One and two. Now on the A pillar here, there is going to be an airbag symbol there. This is a little cover plate for the T25, I believe, or T20. It's underneath it. T20. So you remove that, then the whole trim can come off. Next, we're going to take off the trim covers right here on the edges on both sides. We're going to start on the passenger side. They're just held on by clips. Lever that out. And the same thing over here on the driver's side. Lever out the clips. Lay this down. Now on the driver's side, we're going to take off the trim panel here. We're going to start off by removing the two T20 screws. Now the thing with these T20 screws is that when you go to put them back, don't over torque them. They will crack this plastic piece right here. And now on this side, there's two clips. And now this side is loose. It's a bit stuck to the plastic. Just kind of slowly detach it. So right here, see how like, I can move it here, but it's stuck over here. So when I'm going to pull it, I don't want to pull like this. I kind of want to pull and grab both sides and pull straight out. That way I don't bend those clips and break any panel, anything on the inside. And again, this is a very delicate piece. You want to go slow. We're gonna find the connections. I'll we'll do this clip here first. So we get a little more slack. And then you can see underneath we have one connector here. And pull that up. And this one came off too. And now we have one more coming up here. The light that comes off. So this vent here has a total of three connectors. Now while I'm here we're gonna remove the light panel here. Now if you can see or hear it, see how you can hear this plastic already starting to come off. So we got to be very careful on removing this. This is already coming apart. So just like the driver's side, this side has T20s holding down the trim. So now we're going to remove the whole center trim here. Now there's just a bunch of clips. We have like two here, a couple here, just scattered all around. So we're going to start from the right over here. We're just going to work its way all the way across from the right to the left. Now we're gonna fold this down, but we're gonna wanna protect the rest of the instrument cluster here. So put a towel down here. Kinda of with this hang right there. So we're back over here on the passenger side, right where we took out the two T20 screws. And right here next to the air vent, we have one connector. So we're gonna just go ahead and undo that. Now right here next to the center air vent, we're gonna have one connector. 
This is similar to the connector in the center console where you gotta squeeze the bottom and the top at the same time to get it to release. So see the top one there and the bottom one, you squeeze them together at the same time. And a few more connectors. This is the start stop button here. Same way, squeeze the top and bottom. That comes right off. This connector here is the exact same way as well. Squeeze the top and bottom, comes off. And now this one here, you're gonna have to squeeze the pin. I'm gonna get a better angle. So for this connector to better show you, we're just gonna remove it from its holder. So these two points here, you can spread them apart. That will release this, just like that. Now the very last connector, this is the one for this harness and it connects right behind here. And it is very difficult to get your fingers down in there, but what you can do is you can position your finger right behind the harness, just like that. And then put, put pressure with your fingers behind it to pop it out. Now this, you can slide it on out. And this is really easy to unplug. Just one little pin here on the tab. And then just so we don't lose it, we'll put this back in here. Now while we're here, we have all this space open now. Right up in here, we have a T20. And right over here, another T20. All right, so this did take a little bit of work to get through. Because after you lift it up a little bit, you gotta pull forward to get these two uh, tabs unlocked. So removing the panel here is probably gonna be uh, the most difficult part about this whole job. What you're gonna have to do is right in here, you see this little metal tab right here, you're gonna have to lift this up and I'm gonna jam my pick right in here to keep that unlocked. Lift up on it just hold it in place there and then under here there are two t20 screws one right about here and the other one about right here if you slide your finger across you can feel them so I'm gonna be using a very small ratchet with a t20 attached to it and just gonna work those out so I got both the screws off this is how long they are they're pretty long I just did it off camera. I don't really want you guys to sit through that. So now that we have these off, we're gonna go ahead and take the panel off. So with both sides unlocked, there's going to be a small hole right about here. I'm gonna shove my finger in here to push the panel out. But we're also going to help it a little bit by coming in here. So I'm gonna come in here with my finger over here. We're gonna guide it out. And then same thing on this side. And push it out at the same time. Okay. So I have the panel here. Now first thing I noticed is these two holes here are where the screws go through. And right here, this is the one hole. And this is another hole. And they come right through here. Because they're broken, that tells me that someone else has been here. And they just yanked it and broke this. So this is why we got to take out those T20s so you don't break these tabs. Now going on to the connectors, we're going to remove this connector here and this one, but this one right in here, you don't touch. Leave that one alone. We're only undoing these two black ones and work it out. So once again, this one right here, you don't take it out, leave that alone. So you should pull out the panel just like this. And now we can get to the radio. The radio has two T20 screws. We're gonna take those out. Okay, so this is very, very important. Before we disconnect anything from the head unit or the instrument cluster over here, or this guy, you want to check to make sure if you have a blue connector, not a blue wire, a blue connector. See how this one right here is pink, orange, yellow. 
you're looking for a blue one this one doesn't have it but what's very important is that there's there can be a ground offset between the head unit and the instrument cluster or the combi where if you disconnect them in the wrong order you can render either the head unit or that instrument cluster completely useless it'll be just a paperweight now what you need if you have it which this card doesn't there's no blue but if you have the blue one that blue one needs to be disconnected first and then it needs to be connected last so if we're doing this job right here i need to disconnect if there was a blue one that's the first cable i'm going to disconnect before i touch anything else on this radio okay so there's so many connectors and connections here if there's a blue one that one comes off first and then when we go to reinstall it that blue one goes in last. Now this next part is kind of hard to explain, but to get to the airbag, we need to use a T20 Torx, and we're essentially going to stab the side of the steering wheel right here. So we make that hole. Now there's no better way to explain this, but I've done this so many times that I could do this by feel and you're looking or feeling for a spring on the inside. So I got one side off right there. There we go. Now I got both sides released. We're just gonna undo it by pushing down on the locking tab and releasing. There's two connectors we have to undo. One of them's gonna be right here, up on top. This just pulls off. We got one off here and the other one over here. And now we do the bolt, undo the bolt right here. This is a 16 millimeter. Now to undo this part, we gotta push these rubber grommets in. One here, one here. And another thing, do not spin this. This is in its zero position. So if you spin this any which way, it will not line up again when you go to reinstall everything and your steering angle sensor will be out of spec. You're gonna have warning messages coming on the dashboard. So do not move this, leave this on the exact same spot where you found it. Push these in. This one's a lot easier to find. You can feel it pretty much right away. Slide it to the side on the inside. And you can break that loose. Same thing on this side. Bring it in. Find the locking tab. Hold it right here with some pressure. And undo it. So now to remove the bottom piece, we have two more pieces to unlock. You have one right here and the other one right here. These just slide on out this way and that way, and then the bottom piece will slide right out. So I'm going to use a flathead to just slide it over, my little pocket screwdriver. Same thing on the other side. And now I can undo this. All you got to do is undo all the wire harness that's in here. Just move it out from its location. Now this one over here, there's a harness right behind over here. You can come underneath to undo the clip. Okay. Now these connectors here, the one on the left side, you're going to remove from the steering angle sensor. And you're not going to remove it from here so this will stay there and on the one on the right side you're going to remove 
from this point, not up here. And now, you can kind of just let this hang here, but if you want to remove this, all you got to do is undo these little tabs here, and it'll slide right out. All right, so not to remove the steering angle sensor, this has four seven millimeters. And then this will just come right off. Again, do not move this, so hold this with one hand like this so it doesn't move on you. Keep firm pressure so it can't move. And on the underside, you have one connector here and another one over here with a clip. Just a locking tab on this side. So what I would advise you guys to do is put a piece of tape from here across just so that it locks itself and it won't move. Next thing to remove is the trim right here. This just comes undone. Just pull on it slowly. Undo it from all the clips. Okay, so this will come off. Now you have two T20s on either side. One here and one over here. And then we can remove this. So here you see the blue connector right there. So undo this one first. Okay, so now we have everything off the dash. The only thing left to do now is to remove all of the T20 screws like this one here and this one and this one over here. There's just a bunch of them scattered all throughout the dash holding it to the frame now. Uh, but we're pretty much almost there. So let's just uh, finish off the last bit of screws and remove this dash and get it over to the upholstery shop. Okay, so we'll start with the one right in here. And then we'll there's two in here. Now once you remove the glove box right here on the driver's side, you have some T20s right behind it. Okay. And the T20 where the combi goes. Right in this corner, there's also another T20 hiding. So I had to uh, fast forward the removal of the dash a little bit. So I got all the screws off, I got everything removed for the dash, and so now we're just gonna pull off the rest of the dash, set it on the table, and get this ready to head out. So now that we got the dashboard back, everything looks good, and we're just gonna get ready to install the dashboard back together. We're gonna just be rerouting all the wiring back into the dash as we're installing it, just little by little, making sure we don't miss any connectors. Because definitely missing a connector as we're installing this would not be a good thing as we would have to remove the dash all over again just to get it reconnected. We will install this off camera and come back when we have everything reassembled. Alright, so we have the dash pretty much in its installed position. We don't have any screws on here, so this is still loose. When you're installing this, you want to make sure that you have all your wires routed through where they're supposed to. A good way to check or to quiz yourself if you have everything is to kind of just go left to right and look to see, okay, do I have my three connectors here that were on my vent? My light switch goes here. Here's my connector for the light switch. 
my combi. Here's all the wires for the combi. And you just move yourself all the way down. See, so you make sure you have your wire for the speaker up here, the wire for your heads up for the display here and then all the wires for the radio and you just kind of go from left to right make sure everything's in there and then once you have all your wires coming through the dash the next thing you want to make sure of is that your holes where the screws are going to go that they're sitting flush with the frame so see here this right here this is sitting flush so that's that lets me know that this is installed as far back as possible you don't want any gaps look here see how this metal ring right here well not a ring but see this little metal piece right here this is touching the frame so this is seated all the way back and then right here this screw the screw hole right there that's sitting flush with the frame sitting flush with the frame right here as well you're looking here this is hitting the frame and then you look at the edges you look at the trims everything you look and make sure everything's sitting flush relatively to where it's supposed to be and then the last thing you can also come check, see right here, this was, this here's another screw hole. And like you can see that it's pretty much touching the frame here. So that lets me know that I'm pretty much seated top to bottom, left to right. And now we're going to just screw in all the screws for the dash onto the frame and then do another check after just to make sure we have everything. All right, so we got most of the screws back on. Now, just another tip for you guys. Uh, you want to make sure all the screws are back on. But one way I use to check to see if I actually did that was I will grab the panel and just give it a good shake. You hear that noise? You're going to hear that as you're driving. That tapping noise. Now, I know I missed a screw down here in this corner, but I just wanted to give you guys an example of what you can do. So you can like come and shake. See, it's nice and quiet over here. Shake over here. So you're not gonna see any rattling or hear any rattling happening over here, but you just wanna give it a good shake. And that's gonna give you a really good indicator if you're going to be getting a rattle as you're going to have this assembled. So I know there's one missing here, so we're gonna tighten it up and then recheck. Perfect. All right, so first off, I apologize for the weird transition here. The car is fully assembled and the dash is looking great. The owner could not be happier with the results as they were quoted over $5,000 from the dealer for a new dash. Total cost to redo the upholstery was only $500 and the shop was able to replace the leather in just two days. I honestly had a lot of fun filming this for you guys and giving you a close look at what it takes to remove a dash. If you like this type of content, let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.